Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering pharmacology, and to be more specific, I'm going to be covering the GU system. If you haven't done so already, please do not forget to like and subscribe below. Share my video with any friends, colleagues, anyone you know in the nursing program or that has graduated, but they're studying for their boards. Don't forget, I have extra resources and materials for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com, and you can find find me on other social media platforms under uh, Nexus Nursing. So without any further ado, guys, let's get started. First question. The client diagnosed with chronic renal failure is prescribed erythropoietin epigen, a biological response modifier. Which statement best describes the scientific rationale for administering this medication? One, this medication stimulates red blood cell production. Two, this medication stimulates white blood cell production. Three, this medication is used to treat a thrombocytopenia. Or four, this medication increases the production of urine. And guys, the correct answer is one, this medication stimulates red blood cell production. So guys, you know the kidneys responsible for making the erythropoietin. Remember, erythropoietin, that is what stimulates the bone marrow to make more RBCs. Well, think about it, guys. If this patient is in uh, renal failure, that means the kidneys aren't working the way they're supposed to be. If the kidneys aren't working the way they're supposed to work, they're not making erythropoietin the way they're supposed to make erythropoietin. If they're not making enough erythropoietin, that bone marrow is not producing enough RBCs. Why is that a problem? What's inside of the red blood cells? Hemoglobin. What does hemoglobin carry? Oxygen, right? So that patient that is in renal failure, we're going to be giving them epigen to stimulate that bone marrow to make more RBCs since the kidney's in trouble and the kidney can't do it himself. That's why number one's the correct answer. Now let's look at our other um, answer choices, the wrong choices. Two, this medication stimulates WBC production. Um, no, that's nupogen, not epigen. Three, this medication is used to treat thrombocytopenia. Um, you're thinking about uh, Numega. Numega is what um, um, treats thrombocytopenia. Four, this medication increases, I can't speak. This medication increases the production of urine. There is no medication that increases the production of urine. Now you have diuretics. Diuretics um, increase the excretion of urine. So diuretics help you to get rid of the urine that you already have formed, right? But there's no medication to make you form more urine. So guys, the correct answer for this one is number one. Which intervention should the nurse implement when administering a biological response a modifier erythro erythropoietin epigen subcutaneously. One, shake the dose well pri prior to preparing the injection. Two, apply a warm washcloth after administering the medication. Three, discard any unused portion of the vial after pulling up the correct dose. Or four, keep the medication vials in the freezer until preparing to administer. And guys, the correct answer is three, discard any unused portion of the vial after pulling up the correct dose. Um, with this type of medication, you can only use it once. And the reason for that, guys, this medication doesn't contain any preservatives at all. So after you draw up the correct dose that you need, you have to throw it out, okay? Now let's look at our wrong answer choices. One, shake the dose well prior to preparing the injection. You don't shake it. Matter of fact, if you shake it, you have a high chance of inactivating that medication. Choice two, apply a warm washcloth after administration of the medication. Remember, we're giving this medication, look at the question, and it says subcutaneously. So actually, you expect it to place ice over that um, area to, uh, in to inject, to numb that area. So you're not going to use warmth and you're not going to use a warm washcloth. Choice uh, four, keep the medication in the freezer until preparing to administer, that's false as well. You're gonna keep that medication refrigerated. You want it cool, but what you're gonna do is, before you administer it, you're gonna take it out of the refrigerator and leave it to like room temperature because you wanna administer it room temperature, but while it's being stored, you want it refrigerated. So number three is the correct answer. Which statement best describes the scientific rationale for administering aluminum hydroxide amphigel and antacid to a client in chronic renal failure? 
One, this medication neutralizes gastric acid production. Two, it binds to phosphorus to help decrease hyperphosphatemia. Three, this medication is administered to decrease the calcium level. Or four, it will help decrease episodes of constipation in the client with chronic renal failure. And guys, the correct answer is two. It binds to phosphorus to help decrease hyperphosphatemia. So let me explain to you what's happening. Remember guys, the kidney is responsible for clearing out those toxins out of the blood and then they go into what? Your urine, that's what forms your urine and you get rid of it, you excrete it. But if the kidneys are not working, the kidneys are not able to get rid of anything and so it stays in your bloodstream, including the phosphate. And so the patient has a high chance of having hyper phosphatemia, hyper too much phosphate, that's a mineral phosphate, emia in the blood. So what this medication does, it binds that phosphate, phosphate, the binds the phosphate. So when you go to the bathroom and you have a bowel movement, it all comes out in the, bind, in the bowel movement. Okay. So choice number two, is the correct answer. Now let's look at the wrong answer choices. One, this medication neutralizes gastric acid production. I love that as an answer choice. Here's why. It tricks you because that's what antacids do. They do neutralize, let me go back to the, uh, da, da, da. they do neutralize gastric, the gastric acid. That's what they do. But guess what? We use antacids to neutralize gastric acid in patients with what? Peptic ulcer disease with GERD, but specifically for the patient whose kidneys are um, failing, that's why that's not why we're using it. We're using it because we need to get rid of the phosphates. Okay? So guys, I say this to you all the time. If you've been watching my videos, you've been following me, you know this. An answer may be correct, but is it correct for your question? Okay, don't fall for those tricks because as answer choices, they may give you an answer choice that is true, but is it true for your question? Okay, so number one is incorrect because it's not true for our question. Number three, the medications administer to decrease um, the calcium level, and that's just false. Choice number four, it will help decrease episodes of constipation in the client with chronic renal failure. That is false because actually this medication may cause constipation. That is a possible side effect. Okay, so the correct answer is number two. That is a scientific rationale for giving this medication to this type of patient. Which statement best describes the scientific rationale for administering calcitriol, a vitamin D analog to a client in end stage renal failure? One, this medication increases the availability of vitamin D in the intestines. Two, this medication stimulates excretion of calcium from the parathyroid gland. Three, this medication helps the body excrete calcium through feces. Or four, this medication increases serum calcium levels by promoting calcium absorption. And guys, the correct answer is four. This medication increases calcium levels by promoting calcium absorption. Here's the thing, guys. Um, you need vitamin D to absorb calcium. You can take calcium as much as you want, but if you don't have that vitamin D, you're not gonna be able to absorb it. So that's why we're giving um, that vitamin D to the patient, okay? So number four is the correct answer. Now let's look at our other choices. One, this medication increases the availability of vitamin D in the intestines. It has no effect on the availability of vitamin D. Two, this medication stimulates excretion of calcium from the parathyroid gland. That's false. We're not trying to get rid of calcium. We're trying to actually increase that calcium, hold on to that calcium. So that's false. But I want to make a point with this. Um, with choice number two, something I also want you to know, it does treat hypoparathyroidism. Remember how you have your thyroid gland and then you have your parathyroid gland, right? So when a patient has hypoparathyroidism, they, that means they have decreased levels of what in the blood? Calcium. So this medication helps with that because it increases the calcium levels. So choice number two is wrong. And then choice number three, this medication helps the body excrete calcium? No. 
It doesn't help you excrete calcium. It helps you absorb calcium, hold on to your calcium. So guys, number four is the correct answer. The client in end-stage renal disease is taking calcitriol, a vitamin D analog. Which assessment data would warrant intervention by the nurse? One, the client complains of nausea. Two, the client has had two episodes of diarrhea. Three, client has an increase in serum creatinine level. Or four, the client has blood in the urine. And guys, the correct answer is number four. The client has blood in the urine. Um, hematuria is an adverse effect of this medication, so you have to call the doctor uh, immediately if you see that. Now, guys, I know many books, they use so side effect and adverse effects as the same, but they're not the same. Side effects are things that you teach the patient may possibly happen. You're warning them. You're giving them a heads up. Adverse effects are things that may possibly happen, but you teach a patient, if this happens, you call us right away because you, you'll need to be seen. Most likely, we're going to make you stop this medication, but you have to notify us right away. There is a difference. So let's go over the wrong answer choices. Um, one, nausea. That's a side effect. You're going to warn the patient, you know, you might be nauseous, but that's not something that we're going to stop the um, medication right away. That's not something we're going to uh, make the patient come in for. Two, the client's had two episodes of diarrhea. That's an expected side effect. We don't want it to happen, but it's not a, something that, you know, we'd have them come in right away for. We'd stop that medication. Choice three, the client has an increase in the ser serum creatinine level. They have end-stage renal disease. What do you expect? This patient has end-stage renal disease. We expect that creatinine and BUN to be elevated. But that hematuria, no, we're calling that doctor right away. And we're like, uh, doc, there's blood in the urine. What do you want to do? So guys, number four is the correct answer. The nurse in the long-term care facility is caring for a client with an indwelling catheter. Which preparation should the nurse order for the client? One, cranberry juice with breakfast daily. Two, nitrofurantin, a sulfa drug. Three, vitamin C, a vitamin supplement. Or four, golden seal, an herbal preparation. And guys, the correct answer is one, cranberry juice with breakfast daily. So let me explain this to you. Um, Bacteria, pathogens, they do not like an acidic environment and cranberry juice is very acidic. So what happens is when that patient drinks this cranberry juice, it makes that urine in the bladder more acidic. So number one, the bacteria can't survive because they can't survive in an acidic environment. And number two, excuse me, I'm so sorry, excuse me. Number two, um, the bacteria that was sticking on the inner lining of the bladder that acidic environment forces them to basically fall off and not stick to the inner lining of the bladder. So when the patient urinates, it comes out in the urine. Okay, why? Because of the acidic environment. That's number one. Number two, you don't need a doctor's order. As a nurse, you don't need a doctor's order to give them cranberry juice. Let's look at the other choices. Nitrofurantin, vitamin C, golden seal. As a nurse, you can't order those. You, a doctor has to order those. Okay, so guys, your only correct answer here is uh, number one, the cranberry juice. The male clients admitted to the medical floor at 1200 with a diagnosis of pyelonephritis. Which intervention should the nurse implement first? One, initiate IV access with 20 gauge catheter. Two, administer the IV antibiotic within two hours of admission. Three, obtain a urine specimen for culture and sensitivity. Or four, notify the dietary department to order, to order the client a regular diet. And guys, the correct answer is three, obtain a urine specimen for culture and sensitivity. That is going to be our priority. Why? That tells the doctor what the patient's resistance. First of all, that tells the doctor what kind of uh, pathogens that we're dealing with, number one. And it also tells the doctor what the patient will be um, sensitive to. It tells the doctor what kind of antibiotics to order. So before we do anything on this list, we're going to get that culture and sensitivity. Okay, we're going to uh, get that urine because everything else is going to follow that. So number three is the correct answer.
A client diagnosed with glomerulonephritis is receiving Bactrim, which indicates the medication is effective. One, a urine-specific gravity of 1.010. Two, WBC of 35 on the urinalysis. Three, urine pH of 6.9. Or four, negative urine leukocyte esterase. And guys, the correct answer is number four, negative urine leukocyte esterase. So guys, the leukocytes and the nitrates, that actually tells us um, if that patient has an infection and what type of source of infection we're dealing with, okay? So the fact that um, the leukocyte is negative, that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Now let's look at our other choices. One, the urine specific gravity. So guys, urine specific gravity, that will tell us if the patient's dehydrated, if the patient's going through fluid overload, but it doesn't tell us if the patient still has an infection present. It doesn't tell us if the patient has a UTI. Choice two, WBC of 35, where? On the urinalysis, okay? Guys, WBC for the urine, okay? I'm talking about the urine. I'm not talking about the blood. I'm talking about the urine. Normal is less than five. Choice number two says WBC of 35. So this lets us know that, well, this med's not working because if the normal WBC for urine is supposed to be less than five and this patient is at 35, uh-oh, something's going on. This med's not working. Uh, choice number three, urine pH of 6.9. Your normal, guys, is about five to nine. Urine pH of 6.9. Like I said, guys, your normal is 5 to 9, but what are we asking for? If you go back to the question, we want to know um, which shows that the medication has been effective. Urine pH, that just tells us about like the acidity, whether the urine is more acid or more basic, but it doesn't tell us, you know, if there's infectious process going on, if the patient still has a UTI, if there's bacteria in the urine. But choice number four, Letting us know that there's no leukocyte in the blood, that lets us know that that UTI is clearing up. That lets us know that this medication is working um, correctly. It's doing what it's supposed to do. It's effective. So it's very important for you guys to know, yes, we love urine specific gravity, but again, it just lets us know if the patient's dehydrated or overload. Doesn't tell us about the bacteria in the urine. WBC on the urinalysis, guys, with the 35, remember, um, the normal is less than five, so that lets us know this medication is not effective. And lastly, urine pH of 6.9, even though it's normal because the urine pH is five to nine, all that tells us is that the urine uh, pH is normal. It doesn't tell us if there's an infectious process, if the medication is working. That's why number four is the correct answer. The nurse is administering medications to client on a urology floor. Which medication would the nurse question? One, Rocephin, a third generation cephalosporin to a client who's pregnant. Two, K-Flex, a cephalosporin to a client who's allergic to penicillin. Three, Bactrim, a sulfa antibiotic to a client post-prostate surgery. Or four, Microdantin, a sulfa antibiotic to a client with ur urinary stasis. And guys, the correct answer is two. K-Flex, a cephalosporin to a client who is allergic to penicillin. Guys, a pen, the cephalosporin family and the penicillin family, their um, chemical makeup is very similar, okay? So any patient that has had an anaphylactic or allergic re, uh, a reaction to penicillin, we're not gonna give cephalosporin and vice versa. So number two, giving a cephalosporin to a patient who's allergic to penicillin? Are you just gonna give that medication? No, we're gonna hold it. We're gonna call the doctor and we're gonna say, hey doc, are you aware that this patient that you just ordered a cephalosporin for, are you aware that they're allergic to penicillin? And the doc's gonna say, oh no, I wasn't aware, let's change it to X, Y, Z. Or the doc's gonna say, yes, I was aware, but the patient will be fine, go ahead and give the medication. And at that point, you tell them to come down and give the medication themselves because you're not doing it. Okay, so guys, be very careful. When it comes to cephalosporins, you're always gonna check and make sure that the patient does not have an allergy to penicillin. That is on the NCLEX. I promise you need to know this, okay? The nurse observes an unlicensed assistive personnel performing delegated tasks. 
Which action by the UAP requires immediate intervention? One, the UAP measures the output of a client who had a trans u I can't speak. Trans urethral resection of the prostate. That's a terp, guys. Two, the UAP tells the client whose urine is green that something must be wrong for the urine to be such an odd color. Three, the UAP encourages the client to drink a glass of water after the nurse administers the oral antibiotic. Or four, the UAP assists the client diagnosed with urinary tract infection to the bedside commode every two hours. And the correct answer, guys, is two. The UAP tells the client whose urine is green that something must be wrong for the urine to be such an odd color. What are you thinking about? Uricoline. We're thinking about uricoline, guys, because this medication uh, can turn the urine like a greenish blue color. By the way, if the patient's getting this medication, you should warn them in advance or they're going to freak out about that. Okay. And by the way, this medication, we give it to patients who have neurogenic bladder. So before you give your ure uricoline to a medic, uh, before you give uricoline to a patient, warn them in advance that they're going to see their urine turns like a bluish green color so they don't freak out, okay? And that's the correct answer. Why? Because all of the other choices are good things to do. But if you go back to the question, it says which one requires immediate intervention. Whenever you get a question that asks you which one requires immediate intervention, which one requires further education, which one would you question? Um, what else do they say? Um, it'll come to me. But when you see those type of questions, what they're really looking for is which one is the wrong answer choice, which is one is the wrong thing to do that you're going to address, okay? The male client diagnosed with MRSA of the urine and is receiving a Vanco. Which intervention should the nurse implement when administering this medication? One, hold the medication if the trough levels five. Two, ask the client if he's allergic to penicillin. Three, administer the medication via an IV, via an infusion pump. Or four, check the client's CPKNB uh, isoenzyme level. And guys, the correct answer is three. Administer the medication via an infusion pump. So this medication, guys, has to be given over at least, at a minimum, an hour. So you have to have a pump to make sure that um, this medication's being delivered precisely with the timing, okay? That's why. So absolutely, guys, you got to make sure that speed of administration is on point. You do not play with Vanco. It has to be given at a minimum over an hour. Okay. Now let's look at our wrong answer choices. One, hold the medication if the trough level is five. Well, why wouldn't we do that? The therapeutic range is what? 10 to 20. Five, we're not there yet. So that's wrong. You're not going to do that. Choice two, ask Ask the client if he's allergic to penicillin. Vanco is not part of the penicillin family, so there's no need for that. Um, three, well, that's the answer. Uh, four, check the client's CPK MB isoenzyme level. Okay, so Vanco is extremely nephrotoxic. It can affect the kidney. So what you're going to be checking, guys, is going to be the BUN. It's going to be the creatinine. It's going to be the urine output. It's going to be the glomerular filtration rate. Things that have to do with the kidney, right? Not the cardiac enzymes. It's nephrotoxic. So that's why number three is the correct answer. The female client taking nitrofurantin for a urinary tract infection calls the clinic and tells the nurse that her urine has turned dark. Which statement is the nurse's best response? One, this is a side effect of the medication and is not harmful. Two, this means you have cystitis and should come in to see the doctor. Three, if you take the medication with food, it causes this reaction. Or four, there must be some other problem going on that is causing this. 
And guys, the correct answer is one. This is a side effect of the medication and it's not harmful. So guys, nitrofurantin, it tends to turn the urine like a dark brown color. You have to warn the patient in advance or they're going to freak out. And also let that patient know that this is temporary. It's only going to make your urine that, you know, that brown color for the amount of time that you're taking the medication. But as soon as you're done with that medication, your urine is going to go back to the normal color. So um, number one is the correct answer. Choices two, three, and four, those are false, okay? The client diagnosed with bladder infection is prescribed peridium which is a scientific rationale for prescribing this medication? This is another NCLEX question, by the way, guys. You guys need to know this, I promise. One, peridium is used to treat gram-negative urinary infections. Two, peridium stimulates hypotonic, hypotonic bladder to increase urine output. Three, peridium alleviates pain and burning during urination. Or four, peridium decreases urinary frequency to control an overactive bladder. And guys, the correct answer is three. Peridium alleviates pain and burning during urination. So guys, peridium is not an antibiotic. It's an analgesic. This is very important. And if you're taking farm right now or you guys are covering the GU system, I promise you're going to see this on your test somewhere. You need to know that because students get that wrong all the time. They think it's an antibiotic and it's not. It is an analgesic. It helps relieve the pain from the UTI. Now let's look at our wrong answer choices. Um, one, peridiums used to treat gram-negative UTIs. No, I just told you peridium is an analgesic. It is not an antibiotic. Choice number two, peridium stimulates a hypotonic bladder to increase urinary output. Peridium is not um, a stimulant, okay? It's not a urinary stimulant. It's what? An analgesic. So number two is wrong. Uh, I lost my place. Okay, choice number four, peridium decreases urinary frequency to control an overactive bladder. Well, what type of medication would we give for that? An anticholinergic. Remember the poem I taught you guys? Anticholinergics. Can't see, can't spit, can't pee, can't. Right? So you'd give an anticholinergic for something like that. So guys, our correct answer is number three. Okay, guys, we are down to our very last question. I can't believe this. the time just keeps flying. Okay, the client diagnosed with a urinary tract infection is prescribed Azactem every eight hours, which data indicates the medication is not effective. One, the client's able to avoid three to 400 mLs of urine each time. Two, the client complains of urinary frequency and burning. Three, the client's temp is 99. Or four, the client's urine is a clear amber color. And guys, the correct answer is two. The client complains of urinary frequency and burning. Well, those are signs and symptoms of UTI. So the patient's still having uh, urinary frequency and burning. That medication's not working, right? Everything else is appropriate. Number one, look, the patient's able to avoid 300 to 400 mLs of urine each time. What does that tell you? That tell you, tells you that the bladder is actually able to hold that 300 to 400 each time. That is good. That lets us know that the medication's working because remember, when the patient has a U UTI, they can't hold not even a drop of urine in their bladder. The minute they make urine, they have to already hurry up and go, you know, urinate. So number one's good. Choice number three, their temp is 99. That's a febrile. 99, that's not a temp. So that's good. That lets us know the medication's working. Choice number four, the client's urine is clear amber color. It's supposed to be clear amber color. It's not supposed to be cloudy. There's You shouldn't be able to, um, it's not supposed to look... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Guys, I'm sorry, I'm having a brain fart today. But the point is, it's supposed to be clear amber and look free of, um, of, of infection, okay? So guys, the correct answer is number two. I hope you found this video to be helpful. Please don't forget, guys, um, I always ask you this because in my comments, you always tell me how much I helped you on your last exam. And the only thing I'm asking you to do, guys, is to help me grow. How? Share my content. Share my content on your social media platform with anyone you know in the nursing program or even thinking about joining the nursing program. Don't forget, guys, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. 
I feel like I'm missing a platform. Um, also, don't forget, I have resources, special, especially my audio lessons, available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And you guys will see me on the next video.